The northeastern route of Kenya is mainly a camping expedition run in 4x4s or overland trucks. It traverses along some of Africa's harsh habitat track and sea wildlife endemic with beautiful mountain and landscapes. Surrounded on all sides by a hot dust desert named Chalbi. The Chalbi Desert is the only true desert in East Africa. Apart from the spectacular scenery, the culture diversity consisting of 14 tribes of the northern Kenya. That makes the most lasting impression nomadic pastoralists such as Gabra, Turkana, and Sambul, whereas to the strictly traditional lifestyles and this is practically unique in the modern East Africa. Such journey is for true overland explorers and travelers like us who want to get off the tourist beaten track. My most favorite track of all time is a lifelong experience to do. Here we are, this is a dusty, rocky section and after rain, extremely, extremely, and this is what we have been looking for. And we are super excited, excited for such kind of uh, Sure, and uh, a safari, off road, such kind of mix up. We love it so much. Uh, we appreciate about it. So, what to do? So, what to do? And today, we wanted to push uh, Big Boy Simba to its limits. It's gonna be fun. My name is Noor Ismail Nozol, diesel engineer, filmmaker, storyteller. Join me as I share my passion for building trucks and traveling to the remotest part of northeastern Kenya. Subscribe and remember to hit that notification bell to make sure that you catch up our weekly series of videos. Chalbi Desert. Named by the Gabra people, which means Bear Salty Area. The Chalbi Desert is a small desert in the northern Kenya near the border with Ethiopia, east of Lake Tukana, and contains not all. Marsabed is the closest major urban center. Chalbi Desert is the hottest and most arid area in Kenya. Average daytime temperature range from 43 to 46 degrees Celsius, whereas the temperature drops to around 14 to 15 degrees Celsius at night. The area experiences two dry seasons and two rainy seasons.
Mani, tena sema jina yako ni? Mimi naitwa Abdul Roba. Abdul Roba, umezaliwa pale Chalvi? Chalvi. Unazaliwa kwa gani? 1996. Na umeoa tu karibuni? Eh. Yeah. Unaweza kuona ngapi sasa? Niko na watoto wawili. Eh, unasema ile nyumba ambayo tulikuwa tupata kuona pale ile nyumba wala wanajenga. Na yeah. kwanza kina nani wanajenga nyumba kwa kiasi gani lazima? Ni wamama tu ndio wanajenga. Wamama tu wanajenga. Eh. Yeah. Sasa ukita kuwa Uwezi pewa nyumba mbele Kabla ujawa Uta tengeneze watu Wakati unalete wa mstana Ndiyo mungie pa moja Mr. Abdul Roba explains to us the significance of Gabra culture for those in the community. As a son and daughter of the Gabra community, culture is one thing you must adhere to and you must be ready to follow it. It doesn't matter who you are. When it comes to culture, you must do it as they wish and it is supposed to be done. The Gabra tribe builds a house for the couple carrying babies as they build to wish fertility on the couple. The house is completed in less than an hour. Abdu explains why this tradition is so important. This is our culture. I learned it from my father. My father learned it from his father. And I hope my son will share it with his children. Uta. Tengeneze watu wakati unaletea msichana Ndiyo mungie pa moja Ndiyo muna lala sasa hapo nda Ndiyo muna pewa Kiyo wakati tu ukifanyia arusi Uwezi ifanyia mbele 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 Msichana nili lipu Msichana nili lipa nga miatatu Ndiyo ni kapewa one important aspect of Gabra culture are camels. Camels are a symbol of fidelity. Camels are dependable even in the toughest dry seasons and they provide a means of transport, food, income etc mr abdul explains again to us why camels are important we believe that the camel is the most precious animal that we have the camel is number one such a special animal makes the perfect worry for a gabra wedding Gabra Mr. Abdul outlines why it was essential, so essential. He remembered his roots. Each and every one of us, we originated from somewhere. Like we, the Gabra, originated from Somalia and now resident of Chalbi. Tofauti 
Mr. Abdu explains again the butter trade of one camels for an AK-47 and three camels for a J3 rifle. Armed pastoralists are better able to protect their land, families and livestock, but they are often overpowered by bandits brandishing more sophisticated weapons. <laughs> For now, Mr. Abdul has no gun, but is working so hard. If God blessed him with three to five camels, he must acquire weapons to defend the motherland, his animal and his family. At least an AK-47, he said. Okay. But they are often overpowered by bandits brandishing more sophisticated weapons, which he says are too expensive for pastoralists. One machine guns or bazooka cost five or more camels. Mr. Abdu says again, a stolen livestock or sold to obtain more weapons, which helped attackers carry out more cattle rights. The victims, on the other hand, obtain weapons to defend themselves, or thought the conflict is between two local communities. The access to weapons from across border makes it an international one. As a result, a criminal economy is flourishing as targeted communities seek to acquire weapons to defend themselves and their property.
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and remember to hit that notification bell to make sure that you catch up our weekly series of videos.